Alisa has a monster in the bathroom. Then she removed her clothes and slowly reached for the monster. Time passed and the water in the bathroom was about to flood the ceiling. Alisa took a deep breath and dived into the water and helped the monster tightly, enjoying the pleasure of the moment. Soon water was spilling out of the floor and windows. The sound of the water successfully woke up the old painter downstairs. He burst into Alisa's house and saw the water gushing through the bathroom door. He hesitated for a moment before pulling the door open and the water poured out instantly. The two people in the bathroom seemed to have enjoyed their important time. The monster's body was emitting anery blue light, and Eliza was also looking like she was enjoying herself. Old painter knew he had come at the wrong time, so he quietly closed the door. He still expressed his shock to Alisa afterward, although the painter knew that the other party could not speak, and had no friends, and deep inside he had always longed for care and love, but it never occurred to him that these two would start a human-animal love affair. The encounter between Eliza and the monster began a few months ago. Because of her inability to speak in her lack of skills, Eliza only found a job as a night janitor. Everyday life started at night. The first thing she did after waking up was to take a shower, which was also the most relaxing and enjoyable time of the day. Eliza works at a secret government research facility. It may seem high class, but she is doing the most basic cleaning work of all her colleagues. Only Zelda, a chatterbox, is willing to talk to Alisa. One talks and the other listens, making them perfect friends. Tonight, the research base was particularly vibrant, with a new research team moving in. The subject of the research was locked in a large water tank, especially mysterious. Alisa had never seen such a big show before and couldn't help but get closer to see. The doctor was afraid that they would make a mess, so we hurriedly drove them all out of the laboratory. Although they had not seen each other, it was the first contact between Eliza and the monster since the start of the new project. The cleaner had little opportunity to enter the laboratory, only to wash the toilet every day until an accident happened. Alisa put a row of eggs by the pool to attract the monster. Not only was Alisa not afraid, but she was delighted to see it slowly emerge from the water. It proved that friendship and love can cross species. Although they can communicate, they can connect through music while they are enjoying a good time. Danced with a mob while the monster watched in silence. A magical atmosphere spreads quietly. What they didn't know was that all their actions were witnessed by the lab doctor who was shocked. These days, the research has not been a breakthrough progress. Everyone thought the monster was vicious and did not understand human nature, but no one ever thought that in front of Alisa it would reveal a different mood. The doctor thought that there was still great value in the monster's research. One day, Alisa slipped into the lab with the eggs as usual, only to find the monster tied up in chains on the test bench with blood still seeping from the wounds on its body before Eliza knew what was going on. There was a noise from outside the door, and she hid away. It turned out it was the chief of security who had been off his finger not long ago, and even the wound on his hand had not yet healed, that abused the monster. He picked up the electric button and stabbed the monster, who then let out a painful scream. Alisa listened with horror. She now has only one thought. She has to save the monster. According to her plan, Eliza will first hide the monster in the cleaning tool truck and then quietly move to the parking lot so that the old painter will take it away, but the operation has just begun. When the doctor arrived at the lab, Alisa's face was filled with panic, thinking the plan was going to fail. But the doctor had come to join them. The two of them worked together to get the monster into the car. He also handed Alisa a box of mineral salts. Because the monster had to live in the salt water, the monster was successfully transferred to the car. The old painter stepped on the gas and the car quickly drove away from the experimental base. When the security chief rushed out with his men, they had already escaped. These two crazy people wanted to raise a monster in the bathroom. They threw the monster into the bathtub full of water and sprinkled a large box of mineral salt. But the monster still looked like it was having trouble breathing. Having no time to think, Alisa rushed into the kitchen to find a large jar of salt and poured it into the bathtub but now the monster had already closed its eyes weakly. The monster's adoption plan was over before it even started. But in a few seconds, the monster breathed a long sigh of relief and lived with a smile on his face. Eliza's heart was finally at ease. In order to keep it alive, she needed to buy a lot of salt every day. Alisa also taught the monster to read and write, and the old painter liked to talk to the monster, so all got along very well. But the monster was stolen from the laboratory. After all, the general has ordered the head of security to investigate the matter thoroughly. After careful examination, 
he finally found the bomb fragments in the electrical room. The equipment is so special that no ordinary person can get it on his own and the monster was taken away smoothly in just a few minutes. The security chief concluded that it must be a professional game. Perhaps there were also spies in the lab. Although Alisa and Zelda were also investigated, they were not suspected. They went to and from work as if nothing had happened. Curious about the world, the monster came to the living room and met a fierce kid. The monster had never seen another creature. He also hissed at the kitten. When the painter found it, the cat had lost its head. The monster seemed to realize that he had done something wrong and left the cat's body and rushed out the house, and accidentally caught the painter's hand. After Eliza learned about the situation, she immediately ran out to find the monster's whereabouts. If other people discovered it, things would become uncontrollable. Luckily, the monster didn't go far, but just watched the movie in the cinema downstairs. Alisa rushed to bring it home. Looking at the injured old painter, the monster apologized to him. First it touched his head, then covered the painter's arm's wound with its palm, and then went back to the bathtub. Alisa also did not blame it, but gently stroked it to express comfort. However, no one expected that something more outrageous happened the moment the two of them touched each other. A wonderful feeling emerged, the monster even put its hand on Alisa's collar. He was so ridiculous that she subconsciously ran away from the bathroom. However, the wonderful feeling lingered. Alisa sat there in the chair and thought about it. Finally, she didn't want to be bound by worldly ethics anymore. She went back into the bathroom, took off her clothes, one by one, stepped into the tub and pulled the shower curtain. Everything that happened after that was natural in the sea. The monster kissed Eliza deeply. A few minutes later, the three scars on the Lisa's neck from childhood suddenly opened and bubbles came out of the mouth which seemed to have evolved into fish kills, allowing Lisa to breathe freely in the water. A few days ago, Alisa saved the monster, which he kept in the bathtub. But new problems gradually emerged. Because of living in substandard water for a long time, the monster became more and more deflated, and the scales on its body continued to fall off. Elise realized that it could not stay with her forever and would eventually return to the sea. So there was a release plan. According to the forecast, the tent would be a rainy day. As long as there was enough water, it would be able to return to the deep sea. However, when the day came, many changes happened. Alisa and the painter assisted the monster to arrive here. In the pounding rain, the monster touched the painter's head for the last time and said goodbye to Eliza in sign language. Suddenly, several shots rained out and they were hit by bullets on the pier. It must be the security chief. Before they knew what was going on, they felt one after another in the rain. The security chief walked up to Eliza and the monster and mumbled something as if he was announcing the final victory. He gave the painter a chance to fight back. He picked up a wooden stick and smashed it against the head of the security chief. At the same time, the monster also stood up. Its body emitted a blue light. The one had already healed itself through its powerful superpower. The monster did not hesitate to deliver a fatal blow to the security chief. Then he picked up the Dina Lisa and jumped into the sea. But their story doesn't end here. In the sea, the monster kissed Eliza with affection. A few minutes later, the three scars on Eliza's neck, which had been there since she was a child, suddenly opened up and bubbles came out of her mouth, which seemed to have evolved into fish kills, allowing Alisa to breathe freely in the water. They hugged each other tightly and slowly sank into the deep sea until they disappeared from everyone's view. The two would start a new life in the unknown world.